Why are we talking about the Vigil Resolve? Again! Did it break again after the whole Fedora 38 disaster? Well, no actually. With your help, I've probably discovered the best possible way to install DaVinci Resolve on Linux and freaking keep it that way. Forever. Stay tuned, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel as well, and let's close this chapter once and for all. DaVinci Resolve is a proprietary video editor and essentially a hybrid between Adobe Premiere and After Effects. It also offers the probably best color correction in the whole industry and the best part is that while you can buy it forever for just a measly $300 in comparison to Adobe's heavy pricing, it also offers a free version which is much more than enough for personal and even a lot of professional use. And while it states that it is supposed to be Linux compatible, oh boy, let me tell you that this program is just known to break. From not being able to install it, to converting it to a different packaging format, to not noticing your AMD or Nvidia GPU, yeah, the list is long. See, the thing is that Blackmagic, DaVinci Resolve's developers, don't make it for personal, but for professional use. And I mean like, really professional. That's also the reason on why their installer script only supports free distributions. So yeah, since Resolve doesn't come with all its necessary dependencies by default, or breaks due to updated versions being available, it can get a bit tedious. And the only real solution is to just install it on a working or supported operating system. Oh hold on, why don't we do that actually? We could use virtualization for that, and it is actually done out there. But like, if you only have one GPU, then it already gets more difficult than it needs to be, so it's not really that practical. But there is one more thing that we can do, and it just works perfectly. Containers. Or for our specific problem, a solution called Distrobox. So what is Distrobox? Well, it is a very easy way to set up Linux containers, which is essentially an operating system running within an operating system. But hold on, is that not just like a virtual machine? Well, kind of, but there are differences. A container does not necessarily need to be isolated from the host and can utilize its directories, packages and similar if it is allowed to. Depending on the container, it also does not have to hold an entire operating system, but just the dependencies that the program needs. What that means is that containers can run on your PC just like any other program. And guess what? We can install DaVinci Resolve on a fully supported operating system while still being able to utilize our own personal system. Come to think of it, it's actually similar to Flatpak, except the technology is different. So, how does it work? Well, like I said before, Distrobox utilizes containers, which have their own dependencies included. Those dependencies, in our case, are Linux distributions. If we were to install a program like DaVinci Resolve, for example, then automatically tries to find missing dependencies or programs, first in the container and then on the actual host. So basically, we can provide Resolve everything that it needs without a worry in the world that an update on our host might break it. The working container does not need to change. And the best part is, it is easy as heck. So, let's install DaVinci Resolve with Distrobox. While Distrobox can be installed manually with curl or wget from their GitHub page, many distributions, including Fedora, the one that I use personally, already have it in their repo. So let's open up the terminal and type sudo dnf install distrobox. Once installed, we can set up a container with a supported Linux distribution. But how do we know which Linux distributions are available to us? I'm leaving a link down in the description which leads you to their official documentation. As of right now, the current version of DaVinci Resolve supports CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise. There is also a special Rocky Linux version, but personally, I'm not gonna pick any of them anyway. See, DaVinci Resolve is being meant to be run on the official proprietary AMD and Nvidia driver. For Nvidia, you don't really have a choice, but since I am on an AMD graphics card, I personally don't want to fiddle with the proprietary AMD driver. 
So regardless of what hardware you have, I personally recommend Fedora 37 for DaVinci Resolve. Since I've already tested it heavily and especially on AMD GPUs, it already comes with the necessary packages available in its repo. So in the terminal we want to type distrobox-create dash dash name, let's give our container a name, dash dash image and copy the last part of the distribution you want to install, paste it right here and hit enter. Once it is finished, we can jump into our Fedora container by typing distrobox dash enter and the name of our installation. As you can see, when we list our directory, it already becomes apparent that we can interact with our host. What that means is that if we want to download DaVinci Resolve, we can just do it like usually. Open up your web browser, download it from the website, decompress it and it already shows up in the downloads directory. Ok, so the next part is hunting down dependencies. Inside Distrobox, we now change to the directory of Resolve and just follow the instructions. Let's type dot slash dav, press tab for autocompletion, dash i and press enter. Now of course that fails, since because of this lightweight container installation, we don't have all the dependencies which a normal Fedora installation would. In order to get the installer running at all, we first need to install fuse-libs with dnf. After that, we just keep repeating the installation, copy and paste the missing dependencies until we get an error like this. Now all we have to do is to execute the installer with sudo and finish the installation. When finished, we can already try to launch it, but it will still fail. If you are on an AMD GPU, then make sure to install ROCM-OpenCL. I'm not entirely sure if you need to install the Nvidia driver as well if you have an Nvidia GPU, so it's just best to try it out and install it if needed. Next we also need to install libxcript-combat to get it running, as well as also plugins Pulse Audio or otherwise you won't get any sound. By the way, I'm leaving all the dependencies besides ROCM OpenCL in my Discord if you don't wanna go through the repetitive copy-paste process. And there, if we try to launch it now, it will already open and you can already start editing. But there is still a minor inconvenience. Even though Distrobox did create an application entry for itself, I don't think that you always want to launch Resolve through the terminal within. It would be way cooler if we could launch it straight away by clicking on an icon. Fortunately, we can do exactly that. With the command distrobox-export-app and the path of DaVinci Resolve from within our Distrobox shell, we can create an application entry just like it would do if it was a local installation. And now we can use DaVinci Resolve like normally, except it isn't affected by system upgrades which could potentially break it. Another huge advantage of using Distrobox is that regardless of what distribution you choose, the dependencies always stay the same. You can easily set up a script which automatically installs all of the necessary dependencies, so that you just need to download Resolve and execute the installer. There is no noticeable performance difference, you can automate the installation process on literally any distribution and most importantly, it stays reliable. And that's the ultimate way to install DaVinci Resolve on your Linux operating system. So if you've liked this video, please make sure to show it with a like and why not also subscribe to the channel if you're still here. If you want to see more Linux videos just like this one, then I guess you should watch this one next. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are, I'll see you around.